quantum interpretations of the C++ object model. There's a handheld mic somewhere? Oh, okay. <laughs> Much better. So prior to C++20, all C++ programs were undefined. Since C++20, they're probably still undefined, but at least not for lifetime reasons. So first, the basics. Uh, I expect you all pretty much know this, so you know, tree BQP uh, is a subset of the third level of the polynomial hierarchy PH, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera, Raz's technique, the permanent and the determinant of a matrix, you know, all, all this stuff, whatever. I know what you're thinking, obviously. Um, now, for those of you who don't understand quantum mechanics, that's fine. We're gonna talk about C++ from here on out. Uh, so construction versus assignment. In C++, there's a very simple rule you can follow. Okay, the assignment operator never constructs objects. Okay, well, not, not never. So you can also use an assignment via direct union access. Uh, but that's simple, right? Uh, well, okay, so it, it doesn't always, you know, sometimes there's some restriction. You know what, let's, let's just move on. Okay, whatever, who cares? Let's see some code. Okay, so your code was busted prior to C++20. This code here, undefined behavior. And the reason it was undefined behavior was because malloc created uh, allocated memory, but there weren't actually any objects there, and you're just assigning an int to some memory. Okay, so this was bad. This was undefined behavior. Everybody did this. Uh, because you could have done this. malloc has no way of knowing that you're trying to do an int. You could have said size of float. You could have said four. How does malloc know that there should be ints there? It doesn't. Uh, essentially, like, you know, you look at this code. This code is the code that we don't want to have defined behavior. Because you're saying, oh, I allocated memory, it has an int there. Oh, actually, no, it has a float there. That doesn't work. That violates the strict aliasing rule of C++, which is actually useful for optimizations and program understanding. Uh, it's essentially the same as this code here, the previous slide. Constructed int, you can't just cast it to a float. That's a reinterpret cast. Uh, and in fact, all of your code was busted. The same was true if you went through the uh, standard allocator interface. Uh, everyone's code was busted. This was undefined behavior. Uh, because this was undefined behavior, because even though you could reinterpret cast an int to an unsigned char, there wasn't actually an array of unsigned char objects there, so when you increment the pointer twice, you've incremented past the one past the end of the one object you actually were able to reinterpret cast to. This was bad. Because it meant that this was undefined behavior. It was impossible to implement vector in C++ prior to C++20. So, how did C++20 fix this? It added implicit lifetime types. Implicit lifetime types are types that have a trivial constructor and a trivial destructor. And it means that lifetime creation, or, or lifetime of these implicit lifetime types, begins when you create an array of bytes. But which lifetime begins when you create an array of bytes? That's the question. So to understand this, this is where quantum mechanics comes in. First, the Copenhagen interpretation. Uh, so named because uh, Bjarne Stristrup was born in Denmark three hours outside of Copenhagen. Uh, but the Ahaus uh, interpretation didn't seem like it would roll off the tongue quite as well, so they called it the Copenhagen interpretation. Uh, basically, it says that variables can exist in a superposition of multiple possible type states. It's focused on what type is this variable. Uh, you can't actually say, you have to observe it. And when you observe the type, this collapses the aliasing function and that forces the type to be the type you observed it as. That's one interpretation. Or there's the many programs interpretation. This is the one I prefer. Uh, it basically says that creation of an array of bytes causes decoherence. And then, this creates an infinite number of program states across an infinite number of abstract machines. Uh, one for each possible set of types, and each one exists in its own abstract machine. The important thing here is that undefined behavior destroys the abstract machine, or the universe. Uh, this is a form of uh, quantum immortality, basically saying that programs that contain defined behavior survive, and those that do not are destroyed. This is the origin of the term program execution, <laughs> because most programs are executed. If no abstract machines remain, the behavior of your program is undefined. Now, I'd like to show you Schrodinger's cat. Uh, named uh, for the Unix utility cat that outputs a value, uh, and you don't know what value it's going to output uh, because that depends on the type. So here, we create an array of bytes and then get a random number that cannot be predicted, true hardware randomness, and then we either cast that to a pointer to int and assign to it, or we cast it to a pointer to float and assign through it. Now, both interpretations say that this is well-defined code. 
under the Copenhagen interpretation, uh, the array of bytes, uh, you know, it, ha it has some sort of unknown state, and then, uh, you know, we, we do this. But now you, you can expand it a little bit. You can have the double slit experiment just by changing the types a little bit. Not too exciting. Uh, so what can start a lifetime of an object? We can uh, mem copy functions, uh, or mem copy mem move. These maintain the existing type. Or we can have type changing copying functions like bitcast. These copy the bits, maintaining the representation, but they change the type. Okay, so there's mem copy and the no cloning theorem. Basically, in this example here, we know that the type of A is int. And this means that the type of B is int because the two states are entangled. Okay, so what objects exist? Uh, in this example, we say int x equals five. Okay, my time is up here. Uh, so I guess that's all I have. Thank you all. <laughs>